He said, Dungeons are precious objects. It's given from the universe for a price. It's not mine. So we say, you can visualize everything inside your dungeon. Visualize yourself meditating inside your dungeon. Visualize through that stuff. See the world from the dungeon. That makes sense. But that's the most important mind. This is not yours. It's the presence in the universe. So you have to really, really, really widen your scope. And then this is actually present. Why would the universe keep you present? Why? Think about it. Because the universe needs you to play a role. The universe needs workers as well. <laughs> there are roles to play in the universe. They need followers and they need leaders. So those who are able to do breathing can become leaders in the universe. Hey, you take the Eastern Universe. You take the Western Universe. Any problems with that, you handle that. <laughs> but if you're going to become a universe worker, you must think like a universe person. And you must have the independence of a universe person. If you're always like, dependent on someone, or emotionally not stable, how can you do a task in the universe? So part of that is the processing. As you breathe, you, you get your independence back in all areas. That you can play a role when you're back in the universe. So all of that. So this is a is a object given to you. It's not yours. It's a presence. When you die, you give it back. But in a good condition. <laughs> so take care of your plant and return it to the good space. So that's what you can get this little tiny seed. Today you're all given your first little seed. So you need to find that seed. And when you breathe. That's why you breathe. Don't just breathe with your hands out here or something like that. You must place your hands here and feel exactly where is that spot. Where is that seed planted? Place your finger there as you breathe and just focus your entire consciousness there. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. But there's no more important needles than that. So if you cannot find that needle, there's nothing sadder than that. So you've got to find that needle and you've got to grow it. That little seed. So grow that mustard seed and make it into a beautiful container. Visualize your container. All the fire people can visualize. How do you visualize your dungeon? Have you seen your I'm painting? actually just feeling it. Not, not saying. Not visualize. All the fire people basically. The, the water and the metal people, they, the core, they're at the point. And the fire people, they visualize these pictures and stuff in their dungeon. So make a beautiful dungeon. So what's the process of enlightenment? So as I said, there are three energy domains, more important than the chakra system, although the chakra system is important, and as we reach the new, as the earth changes and stuff like that, we're going to have a new chakra system and stuff like that. So actually, the present chakra system is not so important. So the three energy domains, this is what's most important. So when you build a house, you must build from the, from the willpower, the base. This is called the hadan. This is called the jundan. This is called the sangdan. In other words, willpower, love, wisdom. But you must build from the bottom. So this is building your purity, your pureness of energy. This deals with your, your brightness, your wisdom. And this deals with your warmth and love. Good. So it comes from the inside just like a flower blooms. So if you have enough energy in your hada, it just rises up and it, and it blossoms open. First you have to build the hada. So you can have a flower blossoming inside you. So that's the most important thing that should start from the bottom. And how to be an expert? Can you do that? Keep the dungeon in the center of every single internal life. A complete task. I often practice breathing every day. Do dungeon strengthening meditations often as you plan. The best way to accumulate energy is to continuously empty and get rid of myself. True energy is accumulated after useless energy goes out. Okay, so to make the dungeon strong, if you can feel the importance of the dungeon and you want to grow it and you want to do it, then uh, make it a dungeon-centered life. So as you, as you go by the whole day, constantly just think your mind here. Keep your consciousness here. So judge every matter from here, feel every matter from here, sense every matter from here, then you're doing it from the viewpoint of the universe. 
in the original style. So strength, you, you learned about the dungeon strength exercise? We did it lying down today. You did lying, you did lying down or standing up, mm. but do those often. And every day don't skip breathing. You know how important it is now, so it's your choice. <laughs> but now you know. So you breathe at the end. Breathe in the morning and you breathe at night. After you, you know, when you wake up in the morning, before you sleep. Uh, this is, there's a meditation for this, but this is for our advanced class. So, and as you breathe, you constantly empty yourself. Get rid of yourself. And I said breathing is a process of everything you've gone through in this world, emotionally, physically, everything. And then it goes into your past life as well. Everything's going out as you're breathing. So then everything comes out. Physically, emotionally, it all comes out. So it's a, it's a beautiful process. So, but if you breathe every day, everything comes out is okay. But if you breathe for a while and stop breathing for a few days, then what comes out? I don't know. But we can feel, we can help you if it's breathing related. But if it's not breathing related, then it mixes all up. If you breathe every day, whatever comes out is okay. So it'll go away. Even if you, something comes out, it's emotional, it's a sickness, it'll go away. Continue pushing to breathe. And, um... Yeah, so you have to empty energy first before strong energy comes in. So the first, in the beginning of breathing, it's just emptying out as long as you can. How long did you breathe for today? 30 minutes, we were like... 30 minutes? Mm -hmm. You want to fall asleep? No. No? It's just asleep. <laughs> no, but we spoke. No, in the beginning of breathing, you, you, end, you send out impure energy and fall asleep. That's the best beginning. So at night time, breathe it out and just sleep. That's the best way because you're so relaxed. You breathe out all that impure energy and you just fall asleep. That's okay. It's okay. Why do you want to stay awake? Why? What thing was it? Okay, what's that thing? Now, so if you want to check your breathing, place a book on your dungeon. And the, the book should go backwards like this. So at the root down here, at the root, that's where the dungeon is, so you push up from there. Then the book should fall back. But if you're doing abdominal, br abdominal breathing, it just rises up here from the stomach. You can take a break as well. What's that? You can take a break if you want to. Why do you want to? You choose your way. such a strong breath. Yeah, there are people like who try to use weights on their dungeon, and they try to strengthen their muscles. Time that's not working by the muscles, it works by your mind. So that, that, that you can tell when you walk into school, it's a dungeon room, they have weights inside. And like, you know, like <laughs> they don't get it. But that's happened all throughout these. All these schools have weights, and they put weights on their dungeon. Like, it's strong! Dungeon is not based on this physical thing, it's based on the mental mind. Thing. So when we go to China, we teach dungeon breathing in China, they don't get it. They're all based on the physical body. The Chinese love the physical body. It's all about health and strength. They're like, what about the mind? That's not my body! So it's different understanding. Actually, Dunja really wants to let go of the physical body as much as you can to strengthen the, the spiritual mind, your mind. So if you have too much pressure, too much intensity of the physical body, then it takes away from the strength. That's it. Okay, we're almost done. So, Marcus, you look at you. You can do anything if your consciousness never leaves Dunja. You will always be calm and centered, and if you keep consciousness on dungeon. Dungeon has no limits. There's nothing the dungeon can't do. Uh, find the answer for everything inside your dungeon. In the universe. Okay, so... Um, this is what we've seen and we believe. This may just sound like philosophy or something, but that's why we want you to put it into practice. And the beautiful thing about dungeon thing is, don't believe me. <laughs> don't believe a word I say. Do it yourself. <laughs> That was the, I listened for years and years to people talking. When I came to here, when I found this position, I was shocked because I've spent so many years searching. And I came and I said, do you know something about Dhanja Vidhi? How do you do it? And they didn't say, wait six months, wait two years, read these 20 books. They said, what's the big deal? Why do? Why don't? There's just my breeze from it. It's such a simple thing. This place has such a diamond. Do you understand? You can travel the whole world and no one can give you that diamond. But we give it to you for nothing. Here, here's your diamonds. I was like this desperate soul searching. Where is that diamond? Going from place to place. And no one could show it to me. 
But we show to like nothing. So you guys don't realize how precious a place this is that you come to. Your souls knows you came. If you really know how precious it is to find that location, that you can search the world over, no one can show it to you. Literally, I've shown you, and they go, oh, do it like this, do it like this. They didn't know. You know, when I came, it was so simple. Just, there it is. Why? Because the universe makes the complicated simple. If someone makes it so complicated, you can understand, they don't, they don't know the universe. The universe makes it all simple, simple, simple. It's very simple. Be balanced. Walk a straight leg. Have power. Do what you want to do. Find your way. So, in that sense, anything, if you're done, it's in the dungeon, whatever you want to accomplish, you can do. I'm not saying you need to accomplish that, but anyway, if you want to accomplish that, because <laughs> there's power there. So, but if you're sent in your dungeon, you will be calm. And I always say there's no limits to the dungeon. There's nothing the dungeon can't do. It's just, it's, it's true. So, find every answer inside your dungeon. Whatever you want to know, go inside your dungeon and try to find it. Whatever you want to know, lie down and breathe. Ask your dungeon. You feel sad? Dungeon, why am I sad? Find the answer. You feel happy? Breathe. You feel sad? Breathe. You feel frustrated? Breathe. Every answer is in the dungeon. Literally, you can find it. But the problem is you may not want to find the answer, really. You may not want to really want to recognize the answer. The so dungeon is about changing you. So even if the dungeon is power, that power in the first stage is you take that power to change yourself. Which means you must know what you want to change. So why do we go with the body type? Why do we go with the horoscope? Because that tells you fundamentally what you must change. What energies you have too much of, what energies you have too little of. What you have too much of your emotions and too much, too little of something. You must use the power done to change those. So even though you have the power done, if you don't have the energy to change yourself, then you can't use the true power of the dungeon to go where you want to. So fundamentally, the universe wants you to shift and change yourself so you can be a useful vessel for the universe, for yourself. Changing yourself is most important. So the power of the dungeon, infinite power. Look through your dungeon, think through your dungeon, remember to your dungeon. So there's one thing I just wanted to, to get across is, the dungeon's important. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think so? Yes. Okay. So I want to get across, and as we'll continue breathing today too as well, so you can have a different concept now of your breathing, and a different concept of the dungeon now. Before it was just breathing, which is, that was it. But if you have this kind of understanding, it's completely different. So, everyone was really sleepy too. It was a tough night last night. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the two hours. Mm -hmm. two hours of lecture. Mm -hmm. I the, the dungeon must be hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you! Thank you. <laughs> That's each <laughs> <laughs>